Hey guys, welcome back to my series on microbiology. I'm glad to be back. I apologize for the delay. I was actually in Navy boot camp, and now I'm actually in Goose Creek, South Carolina at NNPTC, which is Navy Nuclear Power Training Command. I'm learning how to be a nuclear operator. It's a lot of work, but I'm really enjoying the science behind it, and I'm also really excited to get back to teaching microbiology. I hope to get these lessons out at least once a week, if not more. I'll do the best I can. I'm really busy, but these are important to me, and I hope they're important to you too. So without further ado, let's get back into it. This lesson is going to be on functional anatomy of prokaryotes. And there's really five things you're going to need to know about prokaryotes to separate them in your mind from eukaryotes. And so the first one is that the DNA is not enclosed by a membrane. In fact, it's normally, and it's normally just a singular, circularly arranged chromosome. So I'll show you this right here in a drawing. What we're going to have is your prokaryote, and instead of having the instead of having the DNA in a nucleus, it's just going to be free floating in your organism. And also, I'm going, to, I'm going to draw a plasmid here. Plasmids are really important in prokaryotes because they're a great way for them to give each other information because they're free floating and they replicate independently of your chromosomal DNA. So here's your DNA. DNA. I'm getting used to this pen thing again. I apologize for that. It's the worst day I think I've ever drawn in my life. Hmm, forget that. And then this is your plasmid. I want you to keep the plasmid in the back of your mind. We're going to be talking about that more in the future because it is very important. Plasmid. So the second one that we need to know is that DNA is not associated with histones, but rather other DNA-related proteins. This one I'm not going to go into detail in, but the important words you got to remember are the important word you really have to remember is histones. We're going to talk about that in a later lecture, and I might even link back to this video when I do eventually create that lecture. The third one is they lack membrane-enclosed organelles. So here we're going to draw your prokaryote again. And so you're going to see the free-floating DNA. So that's what it's going to look like. You're going to have probably a plasmid in here, plasmid 1 or 2. Could be more. And you're also going to see just ribosomes different sizes, just kind of floating around in the DNA. There's really no order or structure to what's happening inside of here. There's no membrane enclosed organelles. Here I'm going to draw their motility functions like that. So this is going to be your basic prokaryotic cell. So remember that they do not have membrane enclosed organelles. Their cell walls, so this is number four, their cell walls almost always contain complex polysaccharide peptidoglycans. These are two very important points that I'm actually going to cover in this lecture. So we'll get to that in the future. And they usually divide by binary fission. So binary fission is, I'm going to try to draw it real simple, because I'm not going to go into much detail in this lecture, but I do want you to have an understanding of it, what it looks like. So here you're going to have your prokaryotic organism, and you're going to have your chromosome, just kind of free-floating in here. So what's going to happen is the DNA is going to replicate. So you'll have a prokaryotic organism, and the DNA is just going to replicate. So you'll have two, hopefully identical, but not always, DNA molecules in here. And then, whoopsies, and then what's going to happen is they're going to segregate. So you're going to have probably still connected, but you'll be able to start to see two independent prokaryotes, each one with their DNA. So this will be your segregation. And finally, you have cytokinesis. So that's when they separate. So that's when you have your finished binary fission. So you one over here, and the other one over here. And you have now completed your binary fission. So that's really just a quick lesson on binary fission. I'm going to go into detail in that in a lecture when I compare it to the other methods of bacterial or actually just cell replication. So the next thing we're going to talk about, and it doesn't really fit well with when talking about gram-negative and gram-positive, but it's really important to understand what glycocalyx is. Glycocalyx is produced by bacteria, epithelial, and other cells. Really important in epithelial and also really important in bacterial cells. It is kind of just a sugar coating, or we also call it the slime layer. And what it allows bacteria to do is connect to each other and connect to surfaces. So on your teeth you'll have bacteria, and they'll be connecting to your teeth using glycocalyx. So 
I'm trying to think of how else to really describe that without going into too much detail, but you really can just look at kind of the functions of it. We'll talk about a couple of functions of it. It's protection, it cushions plasma membranes and protects it from chemical injury. Um, it helps with immunity to infection. Uh, cell adhesion is a big one, it binds cells together. Um, fertilization actually, it enables the sperm cell to recognize and bind to the egg. So that's a big one and it helps with embryonic cell development. So those are kind of just a couple functions of the glycocalyx and you can look it up that more on your own or look at it in your microbiology textbook. You just have to know what glycocalyx is. Okay, so now we're going to talk about your gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria. And I kind of roughly drew their cell walls right here. And so here you're going to see your gram-positive. And you're going to notice that it has this really thick red layer, which I color-coded as your peptidoglycan layer. So here's your peptidoglycan, and you notice how thick it is in comparison to down here when you see the peptidoglycan on the gram-negative bacteria. And you'll notice that the gram-negative bacteria have also this thing called a lipopolysaccharide layer. Now this lipopolysaccharide layer is thin, but it's critical when trying to understand the functional anatomy of a prokaryotic organism. And notice that behind all of these are your plasma membranes. So you're going to kind of draw the peptidoglycan in more detail. Let's stick to our color code and let's say we have your thick peptidoglycan layer and we have then under that, remember it's under it, we have your plasma membrane. In between there is a periplasmic space but it doesn't really help us understand what this does. So basically what this is is a polymer consisting of sugars and amino acids and what it's going to form is kind of a mesh protecting your prokaryotic organ organism and remember this is for gram positive which we're going to understand more when we go into gram staining these things and I'll try to explain in more detail how that thick wall helps us understand and stain these organisms but basically what you got to remember is that gram positives have a thick peptido peptidoglycan layer and no lipopolysaccharide layers so that's your basics. The next one we're going to talk about is your lipopolysaccharides. And so here we're going to try to draw this again, and we're going to try to draw this in a way that makes it more blown up and easier to understand. So what we have is your, we're going to draw just kind of a, a wall here. And what your lipopolysaccharide really is, is just And what your lipopolysaccharide really is, is just an O antigen, your outer core and inner core, or we'll just call it your core. So we're going to draw that thicker. And then what you have is your A lipids that kind of descend through the wall. So what this is, here you will we'll kind of label it for you. This is your O antigen. I'll just do A N T. Here you have your core, and then here you have your A lipids. So these really assist your gram negative bacteria with cellular defense. And we'll try to go into more detail about that. And actually, we're going to have somebody do a guest lecture on antibiotics and how they kind of interact with the cell wall at a later date. And he's going to go into showing how these affect different antibiotics working in the cell. It'll be a really interesting lecture. I'm very much looking forward to it. But for now, what you have to understand is that these have a thin peptidoglycan layer and this lipopolysaccharide layer. So under all of this, you're going to see a thin peptidoglycan layer and then under, even under that farther, you're going to have just your cell wall. So let's draw that in green to kind of help differentiate. Now you have your plasma membrane, sorry, not cell wall. So that's going to be your basics behind your gram negative, gram positive, your uh, basically your functional anatomy, your prokaryotes. These are the basics, and we're going to link to more in depth lectures on each one of these parts, but quickly review, you have to know your five steps, 
or not five steps, but your five differences between eukaryotic and prokaryotic organisms. Uh, understand what glycocalyx does and how it functions in a prokaryotic organism. And then study just your basic cell walls of your gram-positive and gram-negative bacteria.